pass. He's back to pass. Pressure coming. He's going to get hit in the end zone. That's going to be a safety. It's now time for Gridiron State of the Union. Another touchdown for the Rage, and they've gone up. The score is 23-17. Presented by DMR Reconstruction, North Carolina's leader in quality insurance restoration services. With crews on standby 24 hours a day, seven days a week. DMR Reconstruction has your restoration needs covered. Give them a call at 704-327-4028. He's going to hand it off to Byron. Byron on the right-hand side. He's going to be into the end zone. Touchdown, Monroe. Gridiron State of the Union is your insider's look each week into Union County High School football. Michael fires one off, and it's into the end zone. Touchdown, Piedmont. Now we head into the DMR Reconstruction Studio, and your host, Brian Stevenson. It's hard to believe that we are in week 10 of the high school football season. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gridiron State of the Union. I'm your host, Brian Stevenson. In the headlines tonight, Sun Valley, Monroe, Piedmont, Weddington, Porter Ridge, and Forest Hills all get wins last week. The Forest Hills win was number 250 for Coach John Lowry. We'll have an extended interview with the coach in just a few minutes. But right now, it's our trip around Union, and we start with Sideline Mike. Who is at Weddington tonight? Sun Valley travels to Weddington tonight for a WIXE game of the week. Last week, Sun Valley squeaked out a win at Marvin Ridge 14-10, a game in which they took the lead for the first time with 34 seconds to go. Quarterback Drew Swoops scrambled in for the late score and secured the second conference victory for the Spartans. Their opponent tonight is the number one team in our UC Preps Phenomenal Five, the Weddington Warriors. Last week, the Warriors took out Cuthbertson 35-9 as Weddington continues to dominate on both sides of the ball. Tonight's matchup seems very familiar to last year's meeting between the two schools. Both were unbeaten in the conference. The game was won by Sun Valley in four overtimes. Will we see a repeat of last year's epic game? Find out when you join us for our WIXE Game of the Week. Kickoffs at 7.30 on the mighty 1190. And now to game two of our doubleheader and Reed Alexander, who's in Marshville with the Yellow Jackets. Forest Hills has turned things around in the past few weeks, and suddenly they're looking like the Forest Hills teams from the past. Last week, the Jackets dominated Parkwood 56-25. It was Coach John Lowry's 250th win as a coach. But more importantly, it pushed the Jackets' conference record to 2-0. The Jackets have now won three of their past four, and quarterback Jared Leach, he just had a phenomenal night against the Rebels. He ran for three touchdowns, passed for two more, and had 274 rushing yards on the night. The Jackets' opponent this week is West Stanley, which beat Central Academy last week. Tune in tonight to the action as game two of our WIXE doubleheader. That's the report for Marshville, and now to Jeff Weiss, who's with Central Academy. The Central Academy Cougars have dropped three straight after losing to West Stanley last week, 14-7. to Sean Morrison got the only touchdown for the Cougars. Central has now lost three straight and is looking for their first win in conference play. They host Mount Pleasant, who is on a four-game losing streak. One team will get their first conference win tonight. That's the story from Monroe. And now to Derek Skinner, who has a report on Cuthbertson. Cuthbertson will try to bounce back from a 35-9 loss at Weddington tonight when they host Anton County. The Cavaliers started the game hot, going up 9-0. Matt Allen caught an 8-yard Stephen Fusco pass, and Ryan Kendall kicked a 32-yard field goal. Tonight, Cuthbertson hosts Anson. The Bearcats have lost three straight and are still searching for their first conference win. That's the story from Waxhaw. And now to Ken Ogden, who's with Piedmont. The Piedmont Panthers are back home tonight after picking up a road win at Anson last week, 40-33. Quarterback Cameron Tripp threw for three touchdowns and ran for another. The win gives the Panthers six wins. It's their highest win total since 2010. They will try for win number seven when they host Marvin Ridge. The Mavericks lost a heartbreaker last week in the final minute to Sun Valley. That's the story from Unionville. And now, to Chris Rogers with a report on Monroe and Parkwood. The Monroe Redhawks remain undefeated in Rocky River Conference play after they beat Mount Pleasant at homecoming last week, 28-10. Julius Stratford returned from an injury that has sidelined him since the first quarter of the Weddington game back in week three. He finished the game with 117 yards rushing. The Redhawks have now won three straight and tonight they take that streak on the road versus the Parkwood Rebels. The Rebels lost at Forest Hills last week 56-25, whilst dropping Parkwood to 1-1 one one in the conference. 
That's the story from Rough Edge. And now let's head back to the studios and Brian Stevenson. And two more games to talk about. First of all, Union Academy takes on Chatham Central tonight. The Cardinals are coming off of a bye week, and Chatham Central has been struggling this season. And one of the more intriguing matchups tonight involves Porter Ridge at Butler. Last week, the Pirates beat Myers Park 43-7. They are undefeated in conference play. Butler is trying to get back to their winning ways after losing two already in conference this year. And that's our trip around Union for this week. And coming up next, a very special segment. We're going to have an extended interview with Coach John Lowry as we celebrate his 250th win at Forest Hills. Hey folks, Shane here. If any of you have ever played high school football, the number one thing you want to do is win the game. You're going to find yourself in the red zone on occasion. That's that final 20-yard stretch between you and seven points, or between you and a victory, or between you and a defeat. Now, you're only as good as your quarterback. So let's imagine that damage to your home is the red zone. You got fire damage, water, wind, or mold damage. Who do you want on your team, and who do you want the quarterback to be? Well, the team you want is DMR Reconstruction. Tim Farmer is easily the quarterback you want calling the plays in this situation. Folks, they'll help you deal with the insurance adjusters. They'll take care of the damage. They'll fix it back to way better than it was before it ever even happened. It's DMR Reconstruction. Tim Farmer's your quarterback. They are the leader in the red zone. They'll take care of the problem. They'll help you deal with the insurance adjuster. 24 hours a day, call 704-327-4028. 327-4028. They're the proud sponsors of the Gridiron State of the Union on the Mighty 1190. Welcome back to Gridiron State of the Union. I'm joined now by Forest Hills coach Sean Lowry. And coach, you got win number 250 on Friday night. And I know you're proud of that accomplishment, but I'm sure you're even more proud to have your Jackets 2-0 in the Rocky River Conference after that win over Parkwood. <laughs> There's no question about that. You know, uh, each year presents its own challenge, and and obviously we've had a great challenge to start off this year. But uh, we are proud of the milestone, and and uh, certainly that's attributed to the the players that we've had uh, and the staff that's that's worked with me, and and then certainly to our community and support that we've had there. And let's talk about that. You started with algae. That's before my day, but you've worked with a lot of great people. Uh, we were, uh, I came here in 1978 as an assistant coach and worked for Coach Faircloth, who, who really got football going at Forest Hills. You know, we had, uh, we'd had a, a small stint with an earlier coach named Harold Carter, uh, who's passed away now, but uh, Coach Carter did a, did a good job for a short period of time. And then we kind of fell off the wagon and Basically, Forest Hills was a doormat, and then uh, uh, Coach Faircloth came in, and he had been here a couple of years before I got here. Uh, and I got out of college and came as an assistant coach and worked with Coach Faircloth for eight years. But Coach Faircloth kind of got a, a, a winning attitude about football, and uh, and luckily we were able to continue that uh, on uh, since then. I became the head coach in 1986, and so I. Uh, I worked with him for eight years. They say when you've got 250 wins, it means you've been around for a long time. Tell me about the joy of being able to stay at one place. You know it's not the norm. Just look at the turnover in Union County this year. Well, you know, fortunately for me, we've been fairly successful, and the community hasn't, uh, you know, gotten the railroad uh, tracks to run into my yard or anything like that. But, But the other thing is it is a longevity thing, but I really love this area. I grew up here. I went to school at Forest Hills a uh, uh, hundred years ago. My kids think, but but certainly uh, it's an area. My parents are here. My my wife's parents are here, and and so that's been part of it. You know, the lure of money sometimes uh, will cause people to run, and and we could we've had some opportunities. We could have gone somewhere else, but but uh, we like where we're at, and uh, uh, it's just been a good run. So uh, you know, as long as we can keep our head above water and and that kind of thing, then it's a good place for us. I know you don't like to single out anyone specific, but is there a kid or an event, a memory that just stands out to you? I don't. I wouldn't say that I had one kid, but but I, I can say that over the years, uh, the, the the good players that have been here, uh, they have become friends, uh, not only of uh, the program, obviously, but but of me. And 
and, and those are the memories and the fondness of of coaching, particularly high school football, that that, that I carry with me, and I think are, are, are sacred to me because uh, they have become friends, and and uh, I was able to touch a small part of their lives, but but uh, they've been friends and have remained friends uh, uh, even now. And some of those guys are older now. They they've got families, and they've got families, and. And you know, so uh, they become friends, and, and and we stay in touch, and all things. But if I was to mention one or two, then I certainly would leave out some, of them and, and and I wouldn't do that for anything. Is there a team or a year that was the best? That's probably not a fair question either. But is there a group that would probably be the best to ever come through Wingate and Marshall? Well, I don't know exactly if I could say there's one team, but obviously the the, the first team for me would stand out because I. We were 13 and 0. We got beat in the Western Finals by uh, Shelby, uh, and uh, it was an extension of what uh, Coach Faircloth had done before he left. And uh, that that obviously the first one is is big. But but we had a team in 1990 that that played in the uh, uh, Western Finals, uh, uh, and 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 we just didn't quite get there. We thought we got a little boo boo at the end, but but you know. Uh, the uh, it didn't stand out, but but there's been a lot of great kids and a lot of great teams, and and so it's difficult to compare this team or that team, and and each one has their own uniqueness, so it's kind of hard to do that. That's part one of my interview with Coach John Lowry. Coming up, more with the coach right after this. Shane here. Imagine this: it's the end of the game. Five seconds left. You're in the red zone. You have a chance to call one play. You're either going to win or lose the game with this play. All right, at this point, who do you want your team to be and who do you want your quarterback to be? Imagine the red zone is damage to your home. Fire, water, wind, or mold damage. You want DMR reconstruction as your team and you want Tim Farmer as your quarterback because he has a darn near perfect completion ratio when he's in the red zone. Folks, they'll call the right play every time. They'll come in, they'll take care of the problem, they'll help you deal with the insurance adjusters, and your home is going to look better than it ever has before. So if you're in the red zone with your home and it's fire, water, wind, or mold damage, you need the team that can win the game. It's DMR reconstruction. 704-327-4028, 4028 available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're the proud exclusive sponsor of the Gridiron State of the Union on the Mighty 1190. Welcome back to Gridiron State of the Union. We'll pick up now with my interview with Coach Sean Lowry celebrating his 250th win at Forest Hills. Coach, when all is said and done, no doubt the wins speak for themselves, but what do you want your legacy to be when people speak about Coach Lowry, the football coach that spent his entire career at Forest Hills High School? I would like to think that uh, they would say that, you know, and nobody likes everybody, you know, but, but even the people that, that weren't as fond uh, of some of the things I did, I'd like to say they thought that I did it right. We always scheduled good people, and I didn't try to pad schedules or anything like that, and, and, and that I was fair, that, uh, you know, I might have been a hard – Hard tail sometimes, but but overall I was fair and and had the kids' uh, uh, best interests at heart. Well, Coach, congratulations again on win number 250. Reed Alexander and I will be on hand to call the action tonight against West Stanley, and I look forward to catching up with you before the game. I look forward to it. I always like to uh, talk to you, Brian, and certainly appreciate what you and, and your people do for high school sports around here. Special thanks once again to Coach John Lowry, our Coach's Corner segment this week. It's now time to talk about the UC Preps Phenomenal Five coming in at number five, Piedmont, number four, Sun Valley, number three, Monroe, number two, Porter Ridge, and number one, Weddington. Time for extra points. And in my extra points tonight, first of all, I want to remind you that next week, November 1st, WIXC will be at Piedmont as they raise money with the American Legion out there to collect toiletry items and money for the troops that will be sent to Afghanistan. Again, that's next Friday, starting at 4 o'clock at Piedmont High School. And in my final extra point tonight, Porter Ridge goes to Butler tonight with a chance to really make a statement. In a year where they were thought to be in a rebuilding mode, Coach Noonendorf has done a great job getting the Pirates right in position to possibly win the Southwestern 4A title. It will be a tough one tonight, and we wish the Pirates the best of luck. And with that, we are all out of time. Special thanks to our title sponsor, DMR Reconstruction, and thank you for listening. We have examined the state of our union, and I can report it is good. Good night, everybody.